Hello and welcome to The Loop. I am Louis Robinson over here in the UK and joining me all the way over in the States, Mr. Joe Dunbar. How are we doing, buddy? We're doing good, man. We went from summer to fall in about six hours over here. So, you know, just getting used to that transition. How are you? How's tricks? How's, you know, how's everything on the other side of the water? It was good, mate. Over here, the weather's a little bit less drastic than that, right? So we uh, we kind of slide into winter and we're just kind of there until next March, I would say, unfortunately. But <laughs> things are good. Things are good. It's just the usual UK weather, raining. I get uh, Business I get is that. good, though. Yeah, man. We'll come visit anytime. Uh, I'll be in the Southwest pretty soon, Louie, and uh, it'll be a lot warmer there. So you got you come visit me anytime. We'll be we'll have all the sunshine for you, bro. That's the one. I'll tell the missus I'll be on a flight and I'll be over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do we? Uh, what were we talking about? It's been a lot of talk about broadcast, wow factor stuff. What are we hopping into today, my friend? So the last episode, we were talking about LED installations, right? And we were talking about how you can get a bit more wow factor out of using LED as a technology. And that's all well and good. And I'm not going to jump into things and act like I'm a, a basketball fan, but I saw another update from a basketball install recently. And I think it's the Miami Heats. Am I saying that right? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> the Miami Heats have got that massive flaming basketball now in the center of their arena, which is a wicked installation for LED, which is cool. It's good to see. but. There's more technology out there to do things like that in the form of projection mapping. Now, I'm going to be totally open, Joe. I know little to nothing about projection mapping. Put a bulb in, turn it on, and fire it up. That's about as far as my knowledge goes. What so else this is there to know? You know? <laughs> You're going to educate us, Joe. You're going to talk to us about projection mapping, talk to people about how those kind of installations come together and where people should be looking at that technology going now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we can dive into that. I actually, this is exciting. This is a topic I do know a little bit about. Um, I am Barco IX and projection certified. So I've gone through their courses and spent time with their products. We've got a couple other projection solutions as well and screens. And uh, more importantly to this conversation, right? Barco talking about their projectors, but also image mapping solutions. Um, you know, I, Image mapping is kind of what I'm going to refer to it as because a lot of these principles, Louis, apply to direct view LED and projection um, when you're doing image mapping on a non-typical canvas. Um, but there is some things to consider about projection that you might not consider about uh, that you don't really have to make those same kind of considerations for direct view LED. Um, have you ever seen, Louis, you know, I mean, obviously, I don't know how into ice hockey you are. I am from... Northern Minnesota, it is a lifestyle here. It's very much part of the culture. Um, but have you ever seen a pregame at an ice hockey arena where they're the ice and all the, you know, the projection mapping that's done on the ice? I've seen it in basketball as well, but it's particularly good in hockey. Have you ever seen anything like that? I I'm going to say yes, because the small town that I come from over here in the UK, our ice hockey team was one of those things that you kind of had to be a follower of. We were the Wildcats, a so big up to the Wildcats. I don't even know if they're a team anymore, by the way. But I went to one or two games, and they done some cool stuff on the ice. So I'm going to say yes. Okay. Just in case I get absolutely slammed from anyone that knows where I come from. <laughs> that's <laughs> Go Wildcats. We're out here. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much where like most folks, I think, are, are most familiar with projection mapping or where they've seen it and probably haven't even realized. Like, you know, they think it's magic or not sure how it's done. But that's usually, you know, projection mapping. And hockey lends itself pretty well to this type of technology, particularly because it's got a big white sheet of ice. They use the defined spaces on the ice, like the circles and the lines to, to build into the content and everything so like that's something to consider but taking it back from the start uh these these solutions can come up out of nowhere we've done projection mapping installations and retail applications and broadcast application which ties into the ongoing thread that we've kind of been having about that um airports uh film for sure back to broadcast anywhere they're looking for a larger non-typical type of uh, surface. It could be screens. It could be walls. It could be structural. It could be, uh, you know, buildings, I think is another thing people are used to seeing. Uh, we've seen Barco installations on the sides of mountains. It's, it's wild stuff. There was one on the side of, uh, on a dam 
they were down on the water on a floating barge. And I, I think it was 12 projectors lined up and projecting back onto the wall of the dam, bro. So cool. And this is I have to say project. over here in the UK, we really haven't got the perspective on how big that is. <laughs> I suppose not. Right. I guess I don't think about that much, but that's, I mean, you know, what's good. If you, if for anybody out in the world, if you go look up the, I think it's the 2020, uh, I always say this wrong, the 2020 Dakar race, the Dakar rally race, the, opening intro from the 2020 Dakar rally race was something like 23 barcode projectors stitched together to map like a huge image on the side of a mountain. And it's so cool. And that kind of leads into like content and all that other thing. But before we get there, let's nut and bolt, you know, kind of keep it on how we get to these projects. So they come up in all sorts of places. And usually what we're kind of getting into first things first is like, okay, what's the end goal. And then we work our way backwards. So that way we can kind of understand what the end user is looking to achieve. And this is not any different than we might do in a lot of other installations, right? Before I ask you how big a conference room is, I just want to know, like, what does the customer want it to do? Same thing with projection mapping. And then really at a basic level, it's not that difficult. You get an image processing solution that's not dissimilar to like a matrix, right? There's inputs, there's outputs, and we're just going to map these outputs across several projectors. I think the easiest thing to think about, the biggest difference between like projection and direct view LED mapping, Louis, is that on direct view LED mapping, you're usually budding images where one ends, the other one starts, okay? So those pixels are pixel perfect. And a projection... So situation, I don't even want to say a screen, right? But in a projection situation is definitely not the same. Projectors, as nice as they are, as high quality as they are, every projector is going to have more of, I don't want to say a hot spot, but it's going to be hotter in the middle and it's going to fall off on the edges, right? It's not going to be as sharp. It's not going to be as bright. Those edges are not quite as crisp as the center. So you need... I don't even want to give a percentage here because everybody's got a different rule, but I will safely say 20 to 25% overlap on your projection images. So you can put those things together and that the overlap itself isn't faded. If you try to butt two projection images right next to each other, it won't be hard for even a layman to find the seam, right? But guys like you and I, you will see it right away. So you got the overlap to take into consideration. You need to consider your outputs and how big your screen is. I think the easiest example I can give here is like, if you want to do a 32 by nine projection mapping solution, right? It's not two 16 by nine projectors. It's going to be three projectors because you need the overlap in order to not create those hot spots. Does that make some sense, right? Oh, that makes sense to me. Yeah. And it's those little nuts and bolts things as well that I'm hoping are going to help people out because there's projects that I get involved with and I talk to people and I kind of, I put them in the right direction to who they need to speak to over here. And right. initially they come to me with what, exactly what you've just said. They'll say, I need to do this size of image. So clearly I can do it like this. And I'm not in a place to go, no, actually think about these things. And right. that's why this is going to come back like that. Because sometimes people just want to hear it from the first person they spoke to, right? So that's exactly. cool. That's a good bit, of, good bit of information to be taken away. I feel like to your point, man, our systems integration partners are usually their customers. They're ready to spend some money there or, or budget out the money so they can spend it and they want to get moving. So when it comes to us, they're looking for some clear direction so they can keep the wheels going on this project. And so I'm trying to keep it pretty high level, right? We've talked about overlap as a consideration you need to make. Um, your IO was something I touched on a little bit, but those considerations are important. If you have an image, uh, instead of being 1920, it's 3840, right? And it's double the width. Um, what do your output cards look like? What are the resolution of each of your outputs? You might have four outputs on your image processor and uh, each of those outputs might only be capable of, you know, 1920 by 1080. And in that case, so you're going to need two outputs to map across here and be able to create that many pixels. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, the other thing I like to talk about in these type of situations, and this is honestly like, this is why I start with what do you want it to be, right? What is What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to be and work backwards? Because content is king. Content is everything, right? We work with some partners here. Uh, Render Impact is a company I think I've probably mentioned on this podcast before because they just do incredible work. Uh, anytime we get customers looking for large-scale, creative, 3D, anamorphic type content and things like that, they do a wonderful job with it. And really, I like to start there and work backwards. You say, okay, I have a hockey rink. At the beginning of the game, I want to be able to display images and graphics and design and everything like that. We want to incorporate live video and animations and things like that. Okay, cool. Now we know what we're working with, right? We know what the size of the space is because generally hockey rinks are one of two sizes. 
Um, we can then kind of work backwards from there and decide how many projectors we're going to need to cover the space with the throw distance and everything. And now that we have our projectors figured out, that tells us how many pixels we're working with and we can figure out image processing and what we need to support that. Does that make some sense, right? Start at the end and then work backwards to create that. Yeah, it's a nice way to go, Zame. And um, it's a similar conversation I try and have with most partners when I'm designing anything, really. Tell me your dream, and then we'll tell you how to get there, right? Because if I take you on a journey of how just to do anything, you're never going to get what you wanted because we're going to be going left, right, up, down, wherever we need to go. Tell me what you want. We can go on a journey to get there together. If there's caveats, we've got to discuss them along the way. But best way every time, man, 100% I'm with you. And there is always caveats, but we'll, we'll know those things and that's what to look out for. So when you're doing projection mapping systems, you get a request and you've never done one before. It's pretty straightforward. I always start by qualifying. What do you want it to be in the end? And then maybe I'll dive into some technical questions because if I know what I want, what they want it to be, that tells me a bit about the size, the space, the shape, and all those types of things. We did... Um, a couple projection mapping systems uh, this past year that, that come to mind, Louis, one of them was on this big brick facade in a building. It's about a hundred feet tall. Uh, and the idea we ended up using 10 barcode projectors, 10 of the UDX barcode projectors to map. And they did like a waterfall on this brick facade. That's in this huge atrium of a building. I mean, so such a cool idea. Um, another one was an old planetarium. So they had the dome, right? Much, you know, we've been in the sphere. They got the half dome at the planetarium that everybody looks up at. And we mapped, uh, I think it was six projectors we ended up using that had to like angle. So now these got to shoot across the dome, right? To cover all the area. And there was structure that they had that was built into the content as well. So I'm always starting with what's your content that tells me the size and general shapes and what we're trying to do and achieve and what it needs to look like. And then that leads me backwards to, you know, what my projectors are and then what my image processing are. I'm going to put you on the spot, Louie, a little bit. So on our side of the pond, right, we've got a couple of solutions for projection, projection mapping, and just image mapping in general. Because again, a lot of this applies to direct view LED as well. Um, you know, Barco, I've mentioned a couple of times, they have image processing and they have projection. Datapath is a huge partner of ours with image processing. We do a ton of image processing with them, um, not just on the huge, huge side, right? They have a lot of creative solutions for smaller things. So when you think about like non typical LCD walls that might only have four panels, but they're a pinwheel or something like that. We do that type of uh, work with them as well. And then you tried to get into LG uh, for the direct VLG solutions, just add power um, and Kramer and things like that on our side of the pond. But I don't know as well, like, you know, who do you guys have in the line card for image processing? Who are you calling for these types of solutions? Yeah, we're pretty similar to you there as our well, mate. Data path on that units there. We've got Novastar units that we use. Uh, TV1 we use as well for the image mapping and the the image processing. Um, I know Barco, we've got relationships with those guys too. Panasonic, Epson when it comes to projection as well. So nice. yeah, pretty much similar Nice. There for you, mate. Yeah. So robust lineup all through the Midwich group. I know all the other companies and partners in the group have access to quite a few of these pieces as well and their own unique ones. You did mention uh, Nova Star controllers. And I think one thing I do want to point out is that when you're talking about a large scale LED, uh, direct view LED installation, that's going to do image mapping. One other thing you have to consider. So projection, you have to think about the overlap. And especially if you're in, um, structural things where the shapes aren't the same, right? So you need to think about overlap and then you need to think about warping and blending because you need to overlap these images, but now you're on this big brick facade that has corners and angles. So when you map on those, it's not as simple as just doing, you know, one to one and two to two, right? So you, this one might need to go this way and this image might need to tilt that way. And in direct view LED with the controllers, the LED controllers, which is important that we use the right verbiage here, the controllers, those have X amount of outputs on them that go to the wall that support cabinets of whatever their pixel configuration is. And the outputs only support X pixel configuration. So when we work backwards, message of the day, 
<laughs> we're really trying to line up like what the dream is and then figuring out, you know, what the pick, what's the numbers look like? What are the technical specifications that will fit this application? And all these projects, you're often going to end up with over, I don't want to say overkill, but, uh, you know, a little more power and a little more processing and a little more image size than you need so that you can cover all your space. Um, we do have another led brand coming, uh, your led, you know, related brand coming on our line card. I can't say anything about it yet, but I'm super excited to announce it. Stick around. I mean, maybe the next episode or the next one, it won't be that far away. I'm excited to talk about it, but you know, I got to keep my lips shut here, but Louie, that's like, that's image processing in a, in a tiny little 10 minute nutshell, man. I mean, what, what, are there any questions that jogs up in your mind? You kind of snuck a couple in along the way. Um, you know, what is, what is, does that, does that make sense to you or, or is there, is there something missing there? Let's start bringing it together. Like that's, that, that's giving me something good to work with. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are in that realm anyway, or looking to get into that realm that now have a good idea on what conversations they need to be having, what questions they need to be asking. For me personally, I'll be honest with you, we could be on a three hour episode here because I know absolutely nothing right. about this. And it's something that I've wanted to get into more because as outside of work, my creative mind takes me on journeys. I'm forever going to installations and seeing loads of projection mapping and crazy stuff happening that I always want to know, how is that made? So we could talk for hours, mate. We could talk for hours. It's Maybe we'll have to do a segment at some point where we go, teach Louis. <laughs> and it's a long episode where you teach the absolute layman <laughs> how things come together and they work. <laughs> it's a lot of math. It's a lot of very basic math. That's what it is. I, I'm glad it makes sense. You know, like I said, in a nutshell, from a 30,000 foot perspective, looking down on it, you know, that's what you need to know. You need to know what the size of the space is. You need to know your pixel counts. You need to know your shapes. Uh, and then you can kind of find the projectors that work and the image processors that support that. Um, you know, next time you see a, a system or a solution, if you're at the, uh, the hockey game or you see it on the side of a building, you know, my, my curiosity tends to lead me to say, I need to go home. I'm going to Google this and see if I can find something about the installation. I will encourage you again. Maybe we can drop a link or whatever to that barcode video I was talking about. Um, but I'm glad that, that we got a good kind of 30,000 foot view on it. Um, I, we could talk more about it and I think we will, but I don't want to get too long winded in this episode. Yeah. This I, could go on way too long, way too long. Couldn't it? <laughs> I, it's like, how deep do I want to get? Nah, uh, you know, I could go as deep as we can, but I, I really, I, I, Louie, I've got two little update. Well, not too, too big updates for you, but they're quick ones. If you got a moment, we've got, uh, here in the States, we just added Bo's professional to the line card and I am, so excited about it. We were talking some weeks ago uh, in one of the first, you know, first or two episodes or whatever about um, spatial audio and how that kind of is becoming more prevalent and people are asking more questions, doing more installations. I uh, referred to at that time, the edge Mac speakers without, you know, giving away exactly what I was talking about. So I'm really excited to have the Bose pro stuff in the lineup, their line arrays, you know, what they have been able to do with research and development and the way they, you know, utilize acoustics uh, to provide a solution is incredible. So I'm stoked to have them and our, our already awesome audio lineup. Do you guys, do you do Bose on your side of the, your side of the water? We do indeed. We do indeed, mate. Yeah. I yeah. But so. I'm actually going to pop down and see them at a show coming up. So we haven't got a lot of updates this side, but we've yeah. got two shows coming up. We've got UC Expo and we've got Midwich's Royal Ascot event, which is Tech Expo. So there's a lot of stuff we're not talking about yet because you tend to find we're going to talk about it's them a, at the show, right? Amazing. So I'm keeping it done for this week. <laughs> I'll give you one update also that applies to you guys as well as us uh, and everyone around the world. I, I can't say a whole lot about it, but I just want to tease it. Logitech has a new product coming. Um, you know, I think people are going to be excited about it. It's a brand that people get excited about a lot. It's a brand with a robust offering. And there's just some little things that people have been asking for that their, you know, Logitech continues to fulfill those needs. So stick around, uh, you know, folks for the next episode where I can uh, talk about that a little more. I'm excited to chat about that further too. That's really cool. And it's always good to hear that vendors are listening, right? Especially a vendor of that size. They are a massive vendor. And to hear that they are listening to the people and giving them what they want. How do you beat that? Right, right. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, but as a partner, and I'm talking about from the perspective of a systems integrator right now, if a manufacturer, you know, if I feel like I'm heard, 
uh, and they're listening to what we have to say. And this could come in the form of a quick firmware update that addresses a bug, right? I've had a uh, systems integrator on support calls where they get beta firmware releases to fix their specific problem that then gets rolled into a, a general release. So the manufacturers are listening. And I think that's a huge thing to look out for, for sure in your partnership. So man, I guess that, uh, that does it for us this week then, eh? Yeah, but let's end this one on a positive note, mate. That's a good way to end it. I and also it. what I will say as well, we, we mentioned it a few times, right? We could talk about what we've spoke about in this episode on going and going and going and going. The point of us doing this is so people can reach out as well, right? So I've got loads of questions. So Joe's going to get battered by me over the next few weeks anyway. So <laughs> if you watch the episode and you've got more questions, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, get in touch with us and make sure you're letting us know what you need to know as well, right? So we can talk about it on the episodes and I can keep Joe busy, right? <laughs> This is, this is fun, man. It's fun to like, uh, often I'm in a room with a lot of really, really smart people. So it's fun to kind of be the guy who knows some things on the other side of it for a minute. So I appreciate you uh, indulging me. I'm always in a room with smart people and they're not me, mate. So <laughs> <laughs> That's, me too. That's what I get it. I get it, man. Well, 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 pleasure as always, mate. Cheers for joining us, everyone. Like I said, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your questions. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers for joining mm -hmm. us, Joe. Thanks, buddy. See ya.